Hello, what's up everybody? Today I'm going to talk about adding physics to your game in Love 2D. Now, if you've ever used Unity or Unreal, you know there's like a rigid body object. You can just slap that on your player, and then your player's not going to fall through the floor, or go through walls and stuff like that, and you'll be able to like shoot bullets and things. Well, you can do that in Love 2D too. It has its own built-in physics system. And it's actually just a wrapper for a thing called Box 2D, which is the C library that's been around for a long time, and it's really good. So I'm going to show you how to use that today, but first let's see what we have here. Uh, we got our player object, which has a position and a texture. We have a crate, which has a position and a texture. We have a wall with a width and a height and a moving platform. Now if you look down here, I'm giving a width and a height to the player as well. So this is getting its width and height from the texture, texture get dimensions. And if you didn't know already, this is how you get a texture's width and height in Love 2D. And you can just pass it in to these two values here. So that's going to be very useful for creating our collider shapes later. Now if we look here at the update loop, I'm just moving the player using the keyboard. So when the player presses W, for example, the Y is being updated relative to its own Y minus the speed times delta time. So we're using delta time for frame rate independence. And if you look here at the draw function, you know, I'm drawing the player's texture based on the player's X and Y. And then the same for the crate. And then I'm drawing rectangles for the wall and moving platform. Okay. So let's turn that on and see how it looks. Okay, so I got my player here. I'm moving with the WASD keys, and he's not going through any, anything. I mean, of course, right? Because we don't have any physics in our game. So let's add that right now. So how do we add physics? Well, if you've ever used a physics library before, like Bullet or Box, you need something called a world. So I'm going to create that now. Local world equals love dot physics dot new world. And you can set the gravity here. For now, we're not going to have any gravity, so just zero, zero. And if you're wondering, what is this world? Well, that's just going to be the container for all of our physics. So that's going to contain all the rigid bodies. It's going to contain all the colliders. And it's going to update them every frame. It's going to add forces. It's going to add gravity. It's going to check for collisions. So it does pretty much everything for us. But we need to update that. So here in my update function, I'm going to go world update. And we pass in the delta time. That's it. So now our physics system is going to update itself. Great. So we could just run it, but nothing is going to happen because we don't have any rigid bodies. Let's add that now. Let's add one to the player. So player.body, I'm creating a new object. Love.physics.newBody. Very easy to remember. Pass in the world. And we're going to pass in the x and y, so the player's x and the player's y. Okay, and there's one more thing we need. That's a type. Now, what is the type? It's going to be dynamic. Why dynamic? Because dynamic objects are anything that moves in the world. And if you just want it to be a wall, you would set it to static. And what is kinematic? Well, kinematic is going to be things like moving platforms. So they're not really going to be move like they're not going to be movable by the physics system but things can still collide into them, so the player can still ride on top of the platforms and stuff like that. But, you know, dynamic is fine for the player. Let's create, um, let's create one for the crate as well. There's one more thing we need, and that's the actual collision shapes. Let's create one for the player. So player.shape is going to equal So it's going to be a new rectangle shape and the width and height well we could do the player's width we have a player's width and we have a player height Yeah I could just do that but there's a little gotcha here you see like even if I give the the collider a width and a height like where is the center of the object going to be 
well, you know, the center is X and Y, but, you know, the, cl the collision shape, the rectangle is actually going to, you know, it's going to be around that. It's going to be surrounding that. You know, maybe you want that, but I don't. You know, when I have a rectangle object, I want the top left to be the player's X and Y. So we need to offset that a little bit. And there's actually an, an offset overload with this function. So if we pass in an X and a Y here, we can offset it by a value. So I'm going to offset it by half of the player's width, which is going to shift the rectangle down. It's going to shift it half the width to the right. And then I'm going to do the same for the height. So player dot width divided by 2. And player dot height divided by 2. Okay, now that shifts everything. So now the X and Y is going to be in the top left corner of the rectangle. Good? Okay, great. Oh, but there's one more thing we need to do. And this is sort of the thing people don't like about box 2D. Is you need uh, something called a fixture. And what is a fixture? Well, that's going to hold all of the collision shapes. You see, the reason why we need this is because, uh, you know, a rigid body can have actually more than one collision shape. Like you can have a rectangle, you could have a circle, you could have all of these colliders on one object. But the thing that's going to hold that together is called a fixture. So I'm just going to quickly create one. And we're going to pass in the player body, and then the player shape. Okay, I know this seems like a lot of work just for one object, but, you know, compared to actually making a collision detection system from scratch, this is, this is actually, you know, not that bad, and you get used to it, you know? Like, um, if this bothers you, you could always create something called, like, an initializer function. You know, you can wrap the body shape and fixture into one object. And, you know, you could have a function that returns that new object. But that's neither here nor there. So let's do the same thing with the crate. Okay, good. Now we have both of those things. But there's one more thing we have to do. Right now we're moving the player's Y. We're moving the player's X and Y, its position, using the keyboard. But we're not moving the rigid body, so even if we run this right now, nothing is going to happen. The colliders are going to be there, but you're not going to see anything happen. So we have to actually set the linear velocity of our rigid body. You know, like what linear linear velocity does is it just it just moves our rigid body, like but it it just moves it. You know, it just sets a like a a velocity, but it's it's not like you know applying acceleration or any other forces to it. So if you just want like a very simple move, you use linear velocity. Let's do that right now. So right right now we're doing this. And uh, we need to set the player's linear velocity. So player dot body set linear velocity. And what is the x and y going to be? Well, we have a little bit of a problem because we're actually setting these values in each one of these if statements. So we need some kind of variable to cache that. So I'm very quickly going to do one here: dx dy. That's like delta x and delta y. Zero, zero. Okay, so that's going to be the velocity values, and we're going to set it here. So dy equals what? Well, uh, we don't need this, and we don't even need delta time. We can just set it like that. dy equals negative speed because it's moving up. dy equals speed. And then we do the same thing here. dx equals negative speed dx equals speed. Okay. And then we can set dx and dy there. Okay, good. So we're all good to go. Let's run it and see what happens. Well, uh, I can't move. Why is that? Have you figured out what's going on right now? Well, I'll give you a hint. We actually are moving the rigid body, but you can't see it. Why? 
I mean, because we're, we're drawing the player's texture based on the player's X and Y. But we're, at, we're not setting the X and Y, we're setting the linear velocity. So we actually need to set the rigid body's X and Y back into the player. So player.x, player.y equals player.body, get position. Okay. And we got to do the same thing for the crate. Let's see what happens. Okay, we're moving. That's good. Now, can we interact with this crate? Oh! We can. We can definitely move that crate. But something weird is happening. You know, I told you that we're only setting the velocity, but why is the player, you know, like, why is the player circling around like that? Well, what's actually happening is the player's rotation is moving. But we don't see it because we're only drawing the texture from an X and Y point. So what we need to do is lock the rotation for the player. So player uh, body set fixed rotation. And we're going to set that to true. And we might as well do that for the crate. Okay, so now it should work fine. Okay, good. Just to make sure that it's working properly. Excellent. Well, we have physics in our game. Now, we didn't do, we didn't do static colliders yet, so I'm just going to do that right now very quickly. I'm going to make a wall. Yeah, as you can see, I'm, I'm a really sloppy typist. Okay, so we have our wall now, and it's got a rigid body hooked up with a static object. Let's see if it works. Oh uh, yeah, the wall, by the way, is this one right here. So our player can't go through it, which is good. And the wall's not moving because it's static. And if we throw our crate at it, look at that. The crate can't go through it either. Great. And uh, I guess we'll do kinematic in a future video, but there you go. That's uh, physics in Love 2D. You know, next time we're going to talk about more advanced subjects like sensors and callback events. You know, like sometimes you want uh, a collision to give you information about the collision. Okay. If you thought this video was useful, please like and subscribe. Thank you. Have a good night.